Hello, Hofstra fans. I'm Stephen Gorchov, the Associate Director of Athletics here at Hofstra University, and I'm uh, thrilled to be joined today by our Vice President and Director of Athletics, Rick Cole Jr., on a what we can call a special edition of the Director's Cut. Welcome, Rick. Welcome, Stephen. How are you today? I'm doing well. Home in uh, Farmingdale. How is home for you right now? Home is um, terrific. Looking for the good. So the good is I'm home with my three kids and they're home from, you know, everyone's home from college and, you know, we get to spend some quality time together and, and try to look for the good. Um, unique memories, as my aunt and mentor said, you know, it's all about um, creating as many quality memories as you can. So we're doing our best to do that here. Yeah, you, you touched on it there. It is. Uh, as crazy as the time as it is, it is making for uh, some real family memories for a lot of people. And you just kind of touched on it. You're, you're back to a full house again, aren't you? We did. It was very quiet here. <clears throat> and now it's, um, you, you know, we're very, there's not a lot of time, Stephen, you know, our business, right? So there's not always a whole lot of time we've had over the years to kind of, you know, be present, be in the same place. I mean, we try to be, we're very proud of the family culture we try to build, but, you know, since last Friday night, we just kind of, you know, you know, stayed home and, and a really, uh, you know, enjoying each other and, and, and in the midst of work and meetings and discussions and Zoom meetings and conference calls and, um, you know, kind of spending some time together in the midst of my kids, uh, you know, working out in the backyard like they are uh, committed to doing. And, uh, but again, we'll talk all about those kind of things, but um, we're making the very most of a very uh, challenging situation. Well, let's get into it. We'll, uh, we'll start with a few different topics. Uh, let's start with, uh, you know, it, it's really only been a little over a week uh, since uh, our, our worlds have changed. Um, last, uh, let's start with last Monday. You're in Washington, D.C., along with me and our men's basketball program, preparing for, at that point, uh, we had just, uh, Monday, we were preparing for the semifinals. Uh, and Tuesday, we're in the championship game of the CA uh, championship. Uh, well, let, let's take it from there. You know, uh, Tuesday was an incredible day for our, uh, men's basketball program and our university as a whole. Uh, <clears throat> take us through Tuesday and what that looked for you. Well, I think, um, you know, we all, it's, we're all so passionate about, about the things we do, whether it's sport or whatever, you're teaching, you're, you know, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer. Um, but it was a really special time. And Stephen, you know as well or better than anybody having spent as much time with this basketball team. Um, it was a special day, um, you know, in the midst of, of running a basketball tournament, the CAA and campuses and the NCAA was all watching the virus and kind of seeing how things unfold and that, you know, having that, 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 that time you have to spend doing that while also spending time where your feet are at the championship. So let, allow me the opportunity just to, to pause and talk about that emotion. Um, you know, these young men, what, I, what I've really enjoyed about watching them all year is how, how, you know, they have bought into that team culture. They bought, you know, how proud they are of each other, how they raise each other up, how they raise and, inst were, you know, had pride, pardon the pun, in, in putting Hofstra on their uniform and wearing it boldly and proudly. And, and watching them since I arrived two years ago with their commitment to each other, commitment to team, commitment to school, and to watch that that unfold right and 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 your you know the benefits they've reaped from that effort from that passion from that commitment you know we're going into that that game and there's no guarantees whether you're the best team or not you know you have to show up and play the ball has to bounce the right way and you know you watch our staff and how hard they work you watch them i watch them but that day that game unfolded and you want to talk about elation you want to talk about passion you want to talk about excitement the highs of highs as that game's about to end and you get to watch, you know, I often talk about the teams. There's nothing like being in that pile once you achieve something you dreamed of and possibly never thought you could. Um, but watching that moment and watching our coaches and, and their families and our players and their families and, 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 the, and the horn sounding, right, and the emotion um, that came out of those young men and the coaches and their families and, and then the ceremonies that followed, Stephen, I mean, 
that stage, I was nervous the stage was going to come down. You know, the emotion, the jumping up and down, the dousing of Coach Joe with, with the water bottles. And- yeah, I mean, it, it was an hour plus after the game. You're cutting nets down. Your ceremonies on the court. You're celebrating on the court. I mean, I, I don't think we walked into that press conference for an hour and a half at, until after the game, right? Yeah, it's funny because having um, had the very good fortune of, of being there once, uh, you know, being there before, you know, I said to folks that, you know, what time do you think we'll get out of there? Somebody said, well, what time do you think we'll get out of there? I said, well, if we win about an hour and a half to two and a half hours later, because you're not getting off that. Nobody wants to leave that moment, right? Nobody wants to go to the press conference. Nobody wants to leave the court. Nobody wants to leave that moment in time that you played for and you've achieved. Um, you know, every person getting that chance to get up and cut down the net, every, every person that in their own special way contributed to that moment. Um, and, you know, Stephen, it, that goes far – it, it extends far beyond the court, right? Because not everybody that put us in a position to win, you know, the previous players, the previous coaches, the previous administrators, the fans that couldn't make that trip on a Tuesday night, you know, the president, you know, uh, everybody that, uh, that did so much to help us get there, to help these young men get there, the donors – that have helped for years to support the men and women that get to wear the laundry, that get to wear the uniform. You know, there's so many people. Nobody's rushing to get off that court, you know. And, um, and fortunately, you, you let us down the, the path once, you know, we had to get there um, to media. But um, that moment in time was complete elation um, as, you know. And then what followed was a little bit interesting. So speaking of interesting, uh, was there a point on Tuesday, Monday, uh, when – but let's not get to Wednesday yet that you realize we were in something maybe of a new normal, that something different was about to occur. I, I, I remember feeling you were hearing news about the, maybe the Ivy league canceling their basketball tournament. I think we heard that on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, sure. So I, that's what I felt that there was something changing. Uh, was there a point when you as the uh, vice president and director of athletics were kind of like, okay, we need to start thinking about how this is transpiring here. Yeah, I think um, I think going into the tournament, there were lots of discussions about the new normal, about the virus, about how we as not only an institution, a league, um, the, the higher education community, the country was starting to become more aware um, of the significance and the serious nature of, of, of this virus. And, um, you know, I think that you have to be careful. You have to know what you know and know what you don't. Right. And 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 in any in any environment know that right so um as we continue to learn more decisions were being made and um you know as as soon as you know a couple days later you know we halted the the caa uh women's basketball championship um because things once you knew better you do better once you know more you can do more um and again navigating through uncharted territories you know I found myself saying something on on one of the conference calls that, you know, my concern for everybody is that we, we don't allow our, our ignorance to be exceeded by our arrogance to think that we know better and that we know everything because we don't. And, and I think that, you know, you and I have had the conversation of, we are, you know, we can get our information and as always make the best decision we can for our student athletes. Um, we're here for them and because of them and our staff and our community that which we live. So as we make these decisions, right, you know, we have to listen to the guidance of the experts to make the very best decisions that we can um, to ensure that we're doing everything we can for the communities that we're a part. There's no roadmap for this. There's no, we're, none of us are resident experts. I think we've made some really good decisions, but we're going to err on that side of caution. Um, and we're going to err on the side of what's best for our student athletes, not for the wins. And, and that, that's not easy. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of frustration that is real. And, and, and let me be mindful that there's something so much greater than um, at stake here than not being able to play in that one more game as, as all special that it is. And it, it's not to take away from the real raw emotion that, that, that our community is feeling, every community is feeling, because there's this void of, of having something being taken away, but it's at the benefit, benefit of something so much greater. And the one thing you and I talk about is I think that's what sport teaches us and teaches our community that 
hey, sometimes what's better for the team is not what's better for us. And if you put your team first, and the, the team first mentality is that sometimes, as an athletics community, we have to do what's better for the greater team in order to ensure the safety of everybody. So I'm actually proud of, of the, 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 our platform and our, and our community because we've taken the initiative to say, look, we're hurting, we're frustrated, some kids have lost on something really special, but all that's going to be put on hold to do our little part of what's better for the greater good. And I, and I think that's hard to swallow until all of a sudden it's not. It's the right thing. And, 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 and training in athletics and that team culture teaches us that the right thing is hard until it's the only thing and only way you do it. Um, so a, a little tangent there, I apologize, but you know, obviously none of us have every perfect answer for this, but we're doing the very best we can for, for everyone. So you obviously, uh, from a uh, leadership standpoint, are really in two different leadership roles, uh, both from the university uh, as the vice president, director of athletics, and then for the Colonial Athletic Association, you're one of the 10 athletic directors in the conference. Uh, at, at what point last week did those meetings, both from a university and a, a conference standpoint, really ramp up? Was that, was that more of a Wednesday type uh, conversation? Once no, I think, I think conversations were going on every day all along from CAA to our university. I'm really proud of the leadership. You know, President Rabinowitz and, and his cabinet have been all over this, um, making the very um, – making making the very best decisions with the information we had at the time you know joey d um with the caa same thing you know hey listen as ad's we had 10 institutions who this virus was hitting those 10 communities at a different speed different volume and 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 people were responding differently so there was there were, were discussions daily multiple times a day um on campus um at the caa um, you know, I left the championship on Tuesday night, and uh, men's championship, and drove down on Wednesday to the women's championship. You know, our men's basketball team kind of woke up that day, and we played it by ear to see what was going on. And then you all headed home to campus so we can kind of um, get our bearings a little bit. And then, um, unfortunately, our women's team lost the first round. And, you know, I, I, my daughter that go, you know, I have a daughter that goes to Duke, and we, you know, I, she was with me at the game, and I just, you know, we got word simultaneously that Duke was making some decisions, so we took her home on the flight the next day. My, myself and her flew home, and um, and things continue to unravel. And, and, you know, we, you know, during that time, we're having conference calls on the campus, conference calls with the CAA. You know, you and I are participating. We're, we're meeting regularly with our coaches um, via conference call. We had a couple – very, we had a quick in, um, in, in person meeting right up, uh, before campus was shut down. We got everyone together um, and said, Hey, here's what we know. Here's how we're going to, um, these are the decisions that are made, especially as the NCAA was announcing um, the, the discontinuation of the basketball, the winter seasons and the spring seasons. You know, our coaches need to be, we needed to get on the same page. Let them ask questions. Let me ask questions. All those questions were being asked were, were how do we best serve our athletes in our community? How do we, how do we first take care of them? Yeah, I, I saw firsthand, like you just mentioned before, the campus shut down. Uh, we had a couple meetings amongst uh, the senior staff and staff and then the coaches, uh, and you, you kind of spelled it out. And uh, the, the leadership here in athletics and at this university is quite strong. And uh, you have several people. I, I'm sure there's multiple people helping but really, uh, you know, Jay Artinia took the lead from a campus standpoint and stayed home during the basketball championships. And he's somebody that certainly played a leading role for you. And then, uh, you know, what Rachel Peel and her academic team is doing now uh, with, with this new normal of how, you know, remote, remote learning and everything in that area is going to uh, happen. Yeah, you know, I, you know, we made the tough decision. Jay went with wrestling, right? Um, for their conference championship at the front end of our basketball championship. And then Jay and I, you know, who talk probably, you know, I don't know, 12, 20, 30 times a day. You know Jay. You know, he's constantly thinking, uh, how can I help? What can I do? And we made the tough decision. You know, Jay's been working here for 20 years. He's, you know, he's been as instrumental of this, you know, basketball championship as anybody. And, uh, you know, we made the tough decision that he was going to stay behind. He and Alyssa Morales-Kelly were the, really the two senior leaders, right, that were staying behind. And we're, you know, Jay then was the in-person. He went over to the campus meetings. I was on the phone. And we, you know, then he and I would coordinate. And, you know, Alyssa's already was getting ahead of the actual, um, the things on campus for our students. Um, you know, so it was, you know, 
look, we are all judged when things are tough, right? You know, it's easy to do things when, you know, but, you know, people like Jay and Alyssa and you and Brian and Rachel, you know, I'm going to talk, I'd like to talk a little bit, Stephen, about what we are doing for our student athletes on the academic side. So if, the, you know, some folks are actually listening to this that are students, they're, they're aware of what we are able to do. Um, but I'm proud of our staff, Stephen. Like our coaches are hurting. And you know what? I'm more proud of Joe of how he's responded with our kids and with everybody else, you know, than the actual night that we won the championship. You know, you want to talk a guy hurting like this is exactly what he works every day, man. He changes lives, but you know, you're also measured by how you are success wise on the court. This is a special moment for him and his family. And with he and I can talk about the hurt and the frustration, but then he quickly shifts to, all right, what do we got to do? Every step of the way there, you know, he's asking, how do we help? What can I do? Can I do this? What can we do? We got our guys out of the res halls. They're with their families are safe. Um, so I'm really proud of how people have responded because at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it's not easy, you know? And um, so I'm proud of, you know, and thankful for the people we have that are representing our great institution from, you know, and, and it's easy to say president Rabinowitz to, you know, Dolores Frederick to the CFO, everybody's asking the question, how do we help our community? How do we help each individual kid the very best we can, especially since things are transitioning? This isn't like we've all been through this before, right? Nobody has. So let's talk, if I can, Stephen, just a little bit about, about the, um, the academic support and the, and the plan that Rachel's put together. You know, fortunately, because we have this- This quarter, is uh, Rachel Peel, who uh, our Associate Director of Athletics for Student Athlete Success. Right. So Rachel. Um, we all know is a superstar. She's as competitive as anybody else. She's a workhorse. Like, like all of our senior staff, just always working, minds always going. So, I mean, this is a transition time anyway. During the championship time is our, re you know, registration. I think we have all returning students, except for four who are registering, I believe, today, um, registered for their classes for the fall. So, Rachel, during this time of uncertainty has been reaching out following up we have i mean it's, it's an incredible feat to have that many people registered for class for the fall you know she has set up um tutorial um tutorial support and the writing center is ready to go for our students as of the 23rd um monday when we go back to session and online learning um there's been weekly meetings planned with every student who may have needs for tutorial support or special needs for their academic learning or their academic we have people on call our coaches will be meeting with their teams to reiterate the actual steps by which they, they'll need to go through if they need help, whether that's through coach or Rachel and one of her staff members. Um, and, and the biggest thing I want to remind our student athletes is that they have any concern, there are a text, of email, or phone call away to their, any of their coaches, to our academic staff, to their sport administrators, all of which, you know, have been briefed on this. And again, our coaches in the coming days will have a meeting with them and there will be, Alyssa's working right now on, a, on an information sheet that pretty much will be, hey, if you need something in this interim, in this new normal, so to speak, here's a list that'll go out um, electronically to them as, as well. Um, and, and again, we'll be following up proactively, not just reactively saying, hey, everybody doing okay, you know? Even, you know, look, everybody's gonna handle this differently. And this is very real. Like, again, to you and I, this may not be, but to the senior that thinks that this is how their senior is going to end, it's, it's real to them. And I don't think we diminish that. I think we help them through it. Um, if there are other students that are struggling with something, we help them through it by providing the services, even if it's virtual like this. So anyway, that's my, uh, to the student athletes, don't, you know, don't hesitate. Contact Rachel's office or academic advising office, any of your coaches, any sports medicine need, you can talk to your trainer or your coach. We're still, we're still working on all of those services. Uh, obviously, last week, uh, you know, a lot much of the attention was on the men's basketball program and their successes. We had a pair of other winter sports that were really uh, shining as well. You sort of touched on one from Jay being with our wrestling program uh, at the uh, EIWA championships, where we had uh, two uh, qualifiers, another first alternate, so three people uh, going to well, their NCAA championships. And then we had Alex Masai hours away from a uh, competing in the 5,000 meter at the indoor NCAA championships. Uh, can you, can you touch on those two and, uh, you know, and the successes that Vince has had with our uh, track and cross country program and uh, what Dennis has done this year with our wrestling program, which has seen an incredible turnaround. 
you know, yes. Um, first of all, let's talk about Alex. You know, um, he, we, we've talked about him and we will continue to talk about him. He has set the bar, the new bar, the very high bar for our running program, um, whether that's cross country, winter or spring track. Um, you know, your heart breaks for Alex. I think these conditions serve him well, the indoor um, pace. He trains incredibly hard. He had been out there for a few days, and he was ready to go. Um, so he was that close to competing. So just, just to recap, he was running at 7 o'clock-ish uh, on last Friday. Uh, that championship was called off on Friday, I believe. Yes, correct. That was final. So he was out there training and getting ready with Vince uh, Jim Bonco, our head coach, up until literally hours before it was canceled, finally canceled. Yeah, and, you know, heartbreaking. Again, you know, you go from elation to shock to frustration to the point of understanding why, right? And I think we're all still a little bit in that frustration and emotional piece, you know, you know but people understand why and that, you know, Alex and, you know, Vince, you know, two wonderful human beings. Um, and Alex will continue to be a international competitor, um, depending upon what decisions we make and he makes. And um, we'll take it from there with the winter sports and uh, the other, which we could talk about in a little bit. But Alex no is a gift. Alex has been a gift to Hofstra. He's, he's humble. He's, you know, he's a, an elite athlete in the country. Um, he has incredible value of, of the program he's a part of and the school of which he attends. Um, the, the president is a huge fan of Alex. Um, I mean, you remember, Steve, when we honored him at the basketball game, he, was, he doesn't like any attention. You know, we brought him out on center court, and he, he wasn't quite – didn't know what everybody was clapping for until he finally recognized they were clapping for him. Um, uh, and wrestling, you know, I'm really, really proud. And, you know, wrestling is one of those sports, Stephen, I'd be very interested to see people do a day in the life of a wrestler, you know, because I've spent some time um, in the wrestling room watching these guys train and, and their commitment, which I'm sure isn't the case in many wrestling rooms, but what the training regiment that they do in cannibal-related activity, but what they do above and beyond on their own is, is, is quite incredible. And um, the pendulum, as we say, is moving in the right direction with wrestling, and, and we need to continue to do that. And I'm proud of the effort that is made by our coaches and our, and our student athletes. So you kind of just touched on it. So let's, let's go into the next. And this is really the most important topic. Uh, it, it is the hot button issue right now uh, in the NCAA. Uh, what is the, uh, I, I guess I'm going to ask you a multifaceted question here. Uh, as of right now on uh, uh, the middle of March in 2020, what is the NCAA stance on uh, spring student athletes <coughs> whose seasons were cut short? Uh, whether they are seniors, juniors, sophomores, or freshmen, what is the NCAA stance on winter student athletes uh, and in terms of getting the year back? And then uh, after you answer those two questions, can we get into what uh, Rick Cole and uh, his thoughts on both of those topics are? Sure. Well, you know, there was a quick response to the spring because, you know, there's been a lot of opinions on what, you know, the timeliness of decisions and how decisions were made to cancel the tournament, to cancel championships, to cancel the spring championships. So, you know, given the opportunity to give spring athletes, you know, a chance to, to get their year back um, has quickly gone into relief in one category and discussion to the next. And there has no decision been made on, um, on winter athletes, but my understanding is that it's being talked about as we speak. Um, so let's take it the, the spring student athletes, the NCAA has made a decision on? They have made a decision on. I mean, I will, you know, I thought you had this, but we, we've, we've gone so far as to talk about what are the implications at Hofstra if we wanted to. Um, we have to go player by player, athlete right. by athlete, to talk about how that fits in. Um, and like everything we do, we're, we're not reacting – quickly to say everybody has to come back or what do you want to do it's really about like it should be let's take a breath let's talk about each individual spring athlete and as the ncaa extends that eligibility you know my my issue Stephen, is if we're about student athletes then you have to have your decisions drive be driven by that concept 
right? So I appreciate and I agree with the opportunity for given to spring athletes that are able to, you know, compete next year that were, were, were not able to compete. I believe passionately in it. I don't know where that line is drawn, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go very bluntly into what makes that opportunity any different than that of the opportunity that Alex Masai or our wrestlers or our basketball players that have earned the right to compete in a championship, right? And then be told that they can't. So that opportunity was not there. If we extend, if we as a, a, uh, the NCAA, which I remind everybody, everybody points, certainly there is a, a national office, but the membership drives the decision-making, the bylaws, the rules, everything that's driven by membership, us, institutions, presidents, ADs, other administrators, faculty athletics rep. If we're going to make decisions, where, where does it say that that opportunity loss is any different than an opportunity for my softball athlete, my lacrosse athlete, my baseball athlete, of an Eli Pemberton, right? Of a DeJour Bowie, of Connor, our three seniors that, that have ended their career on this emotion of what if, I earned the opportunity, right? Earned it. There was no question whether or not they were going to be selected. They achieved the automatic qualifier, and they're not going to be given that opportunity. Now, if those three young men have another path, academically or professionally, that's their decision to make. My frustration comes is that all decisions should be made what's, based, what's best for our student-athletes. What makes any one athlete more important than the other? What makes we should have the basketball championship over a baseball athlete because we care less that our, that our basketball athletes could, you know, um, God forbid, you know, get the virus in a baseball. Nobody, nobody would ever think that to be the case. So I'm pretty passionate about this. I'm not saying I have a crystal ball as to what that would mean because there are people there that have had plans. They're ready to go. There's plenty of folks that are playing basketball that may have an opportunity to go play professionally, whether it's getting drafted in the NBA, going internationally to play. There are opportunities, but they should be given the opportunity that the spring athletes are given because who's to, who determines the measure by which what is missed and what matters? Now, if our basketball team did not qualify, I would – I don't think there should be an exception if you didn't qualify. So I might be on an island here, right? But I believe that if you qualified for some postseason activity and were denied that opportunity for a reason we all understand, right? So I think they should be given the chance to, I mean, there's no guarantee, you know, but I do think they should be given the chance, the opportunity to get that, that um, participation opportunity. So just, just to clarify, I, I am aware of uh, the rules, but I just wanted to clarify for the listening audience. So the spring student athletes have and will receive a, their year back. Is that They have the correct? opportunity to. The NCAA say, says they have the opportunity to. Yes. And it's each individual student athlete's decision along with each the coaching staff. Yep, yep, 100%. I'm sorry the, if I didn't clarify that. The winter student athletes is still in discussion, correct? Correct. Correct. Uh, now – I have not heard – I well, look, we all hear things. I hear that people are supportive of it, and I hear people are – that it, may, it, may, it won't happen. Um, you know, again, I just – if you're not in the room, if you're not a part of the discussion, everything becomes hearsay um, uh, and rumors. But, again, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this. Again, I have no – I have not talked to DeJour, Eli, or Connor. Um, I've not talked to our wrestlers. I've not talked to Alex. You know, but at the end of the day – as a director of athletics, I'm pretty passionate about this. It's, I've had my turn, Stephen. You've had your turn. We're done with our undergraduates. We're done with that eligibility piece, right? This is their time. And we talk about all the time about this, this very small window we get called intercollegiate athletics. Everybody understands why the decision was made. I don't understand why there would be hesitation to provide that opportunity to, to student athletes that from no, this has nothing to do with their eligibility. This has nothing to do with their decisions that we wouldn't provide that same opportunity we provided. Now, again, if we came in ninth place and lost in the tournament and didn't get a bid, my eligibility is over. But to the young men and women 
who were still in a position to have um, a championship or a postseason, I think we're t- I think we're being inconsistent. I I, I was going to ask you to clarify your your thoughts on the subject, but I, I I think you've done that very very well here. Um, let's moving on. You know, obviously this new normal, uh, and uh, what whether it's about the social distancing, working from home, uh, stuff like that. How uh, how can the Hofstra community help? How can the Hofstra community help both the nation at large and then their own student athletes? And what can we do to be better here to uh, assist others? Well, I think Stephen, you asked the you asked the question everybody else should be asking. Like, how can I help? You know, you you and I. And I know you think I'm crazy. I say that. How do we help? How do we make it better? We should always be asking that question. We need to listen, right? We don't have all the answers. You know, I'm a vice president for athletics. I have no experience in this medical biology, whatever goes into the evaluation of, of, of this dreadful virus. Um, so, you know, since Friday night, I've gone to the supermarket. I've kept social distance. Other than that, I come home, you know, and, um, you know, that's what we're doing here. The, the interesting piece, Stephen, is that we're spending a lot of time working. And in many ways, I feel like we're even more focused. We can get a lot done right now because we're not losing time in other areas, you know. So how can you help? Listen. Listen to the guidance of be a good teammate. How about this? Let's be really good teammates. We're good at this. In our athletics world, you know, we talk about being a great teammate first, putting the team first. Let's listen to what the captains and coaches are saying. They're saying socially distance. Let's listen. They're talking about you know, flattening the curve, you know, we're talking about social distancing. Listen, be a good teammate because we can still do everything and unfortunately still get the virus. We can do everything we can and and incidentally or however the virus is spread, God forbid, it's going to spread and they keep talking about how it's going to increase. So let's do our part. Let's do everything we can to ensure that we're listening, being a good teammate, trying to flat the curve, socially distance and trying not to spread the virus if we can, and we'll get, the, we'll get the guidance we need from the medical experts, from the medical professionals that truly are trained and educated in this. Because as a vice president for athletics, I have to make sure that, that I'm aware of what my expertise is and know what I know and know what I don't know. Well, Rick, uh, it's been a wonderful uh, about a half an hour chat with you and uh, hearing your uh, passion for Hofstra Athletics and, uh, and, you know, and your passion for the time we're in right now and uh we we all everyone at Hofstra both our all of our I, on behalf of all of our student athletes and staff uh, I thank you for your continued leadership during uh during this time and uh you know we'll be sure to chat uh, again in the in the coming days weeks and months ahead you know about where we are as uh uh as a university and an athletic department and uh if there's anything else you'd like to add uh be well Stephen I'd, I'd like to thank everybody that's doing their part right and and that's all we can all do you know, um, everybody on staff, the leadership of our institution, the leadership of, of Suffolk, Nassau, Long Island, New York, the country, like, you know, everybody can do a little part. Um, and I want to make sure we close to our student athletes, especially, you know, if you need help, ask. If you, if you need something, reach out to somebody. We're here for you. Even though we're all across the world right now, we're on spring break. We're just finishing spring break, but we'll be all over the place. We're going to continue our commitment to building champions. We're going to continue our commitment to building champions in academics, athletics, and community and life. But, you know, we're going to focus on your wellness and focus on your academic success immediately. So if you need anything, please, please, please just reach out to us. Rick, thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Stephen.